Uh, let's talk about a little band called the Cult. Let's talk about that. Okay. Um, well, I did Beyond Good and Evil in late 2000. It came out in 2001. Mm -hmm. And I came in as sort of a, uh, uh, someone that, so the, the last guy that was in the band had left and they needed someone right away. And Bob Rock had called me um, and I had worked for him for many years. And I did Tell Bachman and Nina Gordon and his own band, The Paolas. And so I've done a lot of stuff with Bob. So. Um, he called me and said, can you be here tomorrow, kind of thing. And I just jumped, literally jumped right in where the last guy left off and did the whole album. And that was called Beyond Good and Evil. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went on to have uh, some development deals for Owl. I played with Mick Jagger. Um, and I also played with Mike Borden. And uh, Mike Borden suggested me to Ozzy. So all these things kind of kept swinging around, which were great, and then I got back into the cult. Uh, they invited me in 2006, and last this past year I'd taken the offer to go with Ace and uh, do his touring and recording and everything, so it was a big adjustment, big change in my head, but now that I've done it, it's been really, really fun, really cool. You know? Do you feel a difference um, between when you play with a bigger band like Ozzy or Ace Freely? And you play in a bigger venue with thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, or you play a smaller, more intimate venue with Owl. Uh, you know, it's funny that that like the big shows are exciting. Mm -hmm. The lights and the, the sound is you know uh, large, of course. And Ace was just we were just in uh, Europe doing Hellfest, Donington, you know, like fifty thousand people and stuff that like that. Crazy, right? Yeah, it was really cool. Um, and Ace gives me a bass solo every night, which is outrageous. So I'm, I'm featured in the band, and I sing all night, and I sing lead on Strange Wings as well. So um, the good thing about Ace's band, we have Richie Scarlett on guitar. Richie was in the band with uh, Ace years ago, so to have him back is a really, really cool thing with Ace. The energy is really cool. And Scotty Coogan's on drums, and he sings amazing. He's great at the Paul Stanley stuff or like Led Zeppelin kind of stuff. And I sing as well in Ace. So each guy in the band, I wouldn't compare it to Kiss, but I would say each guy's got his own strong personality uh, that can really hold his own and kick it in the ass and rotate around the room, you know. So um, when I come back to the owl thing, it's very demanding. I'm playing with the upright, playing with the bow, with the ball, yeah. doing a lot of tricky things with effects and singing. So I really have to be well organized when I go on stage. It's just a different ball game. But, you're right, it's much more intimate. Like last night at the Mercury Lounge, Maybe um, I was banging my feet. Yeah, I don't know, there's probably like, I don't know, 120 people uh -huh. there last night. And it, it was sweaty and crowded in a, in a small <laughs> club. And I really, you know, if you're standing right here and your head's right here, you're going to get lashed with my sweat. You might get a graze of my bow. You gotta be careful, you can't just, uh, you know. <laughs> just like, get but, out of my you know, way. <laughs> I mean, last night people were saying I was sweating so much that every time I just flung my hair, there was just like wafts of water going into the crowd. So, so it's much more intimate uh, as compared to like a big, big uh, show like Donington. The barrier's way over there, like way, you know, many, many yeah. feet away. And you're just, there's a disconnect with some of the big shows. You know, when I was in Tal Bachman, he had that big hit, She's So High, and late 90s, and we played uh, Ottawa, 150,000 people, mm -hmm. Canada Day. And uh, that was so huge, I, I felt like I, I was playing in my living room or something, because they were so far away, and it was so fast. So I kind of prefer the sweaty club, even though the big shows are obviously very exciting. I hear you. That's a really good point. I, I hear you on that one. Uh, you kind of have a big disconnect with the audience when you play in a bigger show? I'm always reaching to the crowd as far away as they are. I'm always trying to make eye contact. I'm always trying to grab someone's hand if I can. I think it's important to, to have the energy back and forth, you know? Yeah. And last night I said a bunch of outrageous things on stage and riled people up. And every night's <laughs> going to be different, you know what I mean? And, and it should be that way with the people you're dealing with. You should be reaching out and having that unique experience every night. So it's different every night. We always have this discussion with our musicians and people from the scene uh, in general about how there's really no bands like Led Zeppelin and Kiss and Black Sabbath anymore. There's really nobody that captures the whole generation anymore. And um, in your opinion, what is 
what is the next band that is going to be that great band, like Led Zeppelin and Sabbath? Well, interestingly enough, uh, Film is a new band, which we played with last night, even though Dave's known from Slayer. And Owl's a new-ish band, even though it's our right. third record, because people are just finding out about us now. So um, I think a lot of the artists are going to continue to be artists, because right. I only know that way. I only know how to be an artist. So um, Owl's pushing the envelope. I'm on stage playing really hard rock with an upright bass, and that's completely uh, different. And has its ups and downs and on the stage as far as challenges, but it's really fun. And um, I miss who's the favorite bass player, like it was Eddie Van Halen and we had our Yngwies in the 80s and right. we had like a Flea and we had Les Claypool. Yeah, like had, who do we have now? We have, well, you, have, you have Owl. You have Owl. Yeah, and Owl Phil, band. I like that. <laughs> the new band called Phil and Owl. <laughs> yeah, I would go with that. I mean, as far as real artistic <laughs> bands, I mean, you know, that's why we really like Dave and the guys and, and Phil is the real true artists. Mm -hmm. So, you know, true artists won't go anywhere, but it, the, the path has been harder. The vehicle yeah. is not there for bands. Like I don't know how a kid could make it coming up with a guitar today. You, you can't. There's you no can't. there's no vehicle. And Gene yeah. Simmons was right when he was saying rock's dead to a certain degree. I mean, is it dead? You know, I mean, compared to what it used to be, I understand what he's saying. I'd like to say it's not dead and stay optimistic. But right. but you have to be realistic here. The same avenues are not open to the youth. And I'm lucky, and, and guys like Dave Lombardo are lucky in a sense because we got branded with a lot of other bands. Right. But that, that was another era, that was another time where labels made the brand happen. Now to make your brand happen, it's more of a mom and pop shop. And that's the way to do it. You own your stuff, you put it out, and that's what we're doing. How did you start playing bass? I had friends, was very into music, and I had friends trying to get me into playing bass, funny mm -hmm. enough. Uh, a friend of mine, Tony Magnano, and uh, uh, Brian Burke. And Chris Marwa, these were like my childhood friends in New York upstate when uh, I moved upstate. And basically, they wanted me to play bass and they played me everything under the sun. You name it, great bass players, but I didn't You're get like, the spark. Hey. I didn't have the spark, right. but I really had the musical spark since mm -hmm. I was a kid. I sang a lot, I was in choirs and Catholic school and all that, and I always sang. And then I loved Kiss at eight, so I knew there was the bug. So it was Iron Maiden when I first heard Iron Maiden. I was just blown away. I heard Steve Harris and I went, what? You can do that, and it just changed my whole perspective of the bass, and realizing the bass could be such a strong leading instrument and supportive instrument's a lot of fun. Because, you know, I was turned off of the guitar because everyone was playing guitar. Yeah. And everyone was talking about guitar. It was, it, to me, it was guitar heavy in the 80s. I mean, some of the bands were literally writing songs just to do a guitar solo. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, it's funny, when I got with Ozzy, he, he, he said to me, Hey Chris, you're gonna effing love me, mate, because <laughs> I love the bass really loud and I want all the riffs you can throw in there, mate. Give me some strong riffs, you know. Yeah. And he always felt, and has said this in the past, I've read and stuff like that, but the bass makes it heavy. You know, the bass is the thing that's gonna really weight it and make it heavy. So a lot of the Aussie stuff, if you go back to I Don't Know, Crazy Train, any of these older original Aussie band songs, I mean, they were super heavy bass driven. Even the, the, the guitar was amazing with Randy Rhodes and all that. Yeah. The bass was driving. And then he had Geezer, obviously, too, from Sabbath. So if you could put on any of that stuff, the bass is really loud, and that's why it sounds heavy. If you cover it up with a bunch of guitar, you're losing all the dynamics of the drums and the bass. And you don't even know what the bass tone is. It just sounds like a bass note. So uh, the truth is, is you're you know, a well-rounded band. You go to Kiss, the bass is really loud. That's Detroit true. Rock City, the bass is really loud. Um, you know, so uh, Iron Maiden, the bass is really loud, but there's, there's no need for a problem in the, in the mix, you know what I mean? You can hear everything, and uh, that sort of mentality of all guitar, to me, is a very foolish one, because it lacks dynamics, it lacks taste, it's just, you know, everything's on 11. The guitar player thing uh, needs to be as sensitive as the drummer, or the bass player, or the singer. Because that's, it's a song, it's an ensemble, you know. So, uh, yeah, th that, that time in, in music, maybe the 80s mm -hmm. uh, into the early 90s, there was a lot of frivolous stuff going on. So for me, it's all about the song craft, the songwriting, and, um, you know, we're a trio, so each guy has to be really strong in the trio. And, and uh, the bass is, is a real great thing in a trio because then it speaks for itself. It's not all covered up with guitar. What is in your record coming out? 
Well, it came out July 28th, um, and uh, we, we have a new video that just came out, just got featured, and it's on iTunes, uh, Things You Can't See, and we also have a, a new video we're working on now that's going to come out and support this. And I'm going back out with Ace in September, so it looks like October Owl is going to be busy again. So I juggle the two things. Um, but it's great. When I'm out with Ace, everyone, people are yelling to me, Owl Man and Space Man. And <laughs> it just all is good. Owl Man and Space you know? Man. And then I do all these interviews for Owl and press for Owl and for our new record and stuff like that. And everyone talks about Ace. So it's all, it all uh, is good momentum and good positive right. energy. Hey there, Chris Wise here from Owl and Ace Frehley Band. And you're watching When to Go After Show, OwlTheBand.net. Yeah.